right, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Today, Event Temple is excited to welcome Doug Kennedy, president of the Kennedy Training Network, and Kathy Cook, executive director of training and development at the Kennedy Training Network. Kennedy Training is the lodging and hospitality industry's best source for hotel training programs and supportive services in topic areas of hotel sales, reservations, and hospitality excellence. As always, we will record the webinar. Um, so if you have to sign off early or miss any of it, you'll receive an email tomorrow with that recording. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat bot or in the Q&A section, and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the webinar. All right, Doug, I'll kick it over to you. Thank you very much, Sammy, and thank you to Event Temple for generously sponsoring our program today. Again, I'm Doug Kennedy with Kennedy Training Network, and we'll be with you for about 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, on how on training content that we think is really relevant, particularly right now, for prospecting and selling to remote buyers and using a tech for touch approach. We'll be addressing using the online scheduling apps, selling via screen share meetings, and also sending personalized video emails. So I hope to bring value. Um, I know you said good morning, good afternoon. We should probably say good evening, uh, Samantha, because I see that we had, in looking at the registration list, we have nearly 100 signups, which is exciting, but it's also very interesting that we have five continents recommend, represented. I was looking for Arctica and Antarctica, so we're only missing there. But a lot of places I've been, Bulgaria, Brazil stood out in particular, places I would love to go someday, Vietnam and Australia. Good day to you. And of course, uh, our friends in uh, Canada and here in the United States. Kennedy Training Network, we're based in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. We do training worldwide um, as often as possible in person and as well as live webcam training events, which we'll talk a little bit about because this particular program today, this webcast, is kind of what we do in our webcam training. Um, the webcam training we do is one-on-one, -on -one, us to you or us to a very small group and one-on-one -on -one coaching. But you'll get a taste of that today. We do, in addition to the hotel sales training, which we're covering today, we also offer a hospitality training, including a front desk, heart of hospitality certification, targeting front desk associates, reservation sales training. We also do mystery shopping and call scoring for clients and call centers that have call recording tools and platforms. Uh, let me have my colleague and associate, Kathy Cook, say a few words, because she'll be co-presenting parts of this program today. Say hello, Kathy. Thank you, Douglas. My name is Kathy Cook, and I've been working for Kennedy Training Network for about three and a half years. I started my career very humbly in the Poconos at a Best Western Genetti Motor Lodge that I absolutely adored. And then I moved to Washington, DC, and I worked for Marriott International for 27 years. 19 of those years were at Marriott headquarters where I managed the learning and development for global learning and development for around the country for all 9,000 properties for Marriott. And I love training. I love taking people to the next level. So I hope that we can take you all to the next level in sales today. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Now, before I, before I turn it over to Mr. Kennedy, I want to make sure that you go to the very top right of your Zoom and you'll see view. Click on view and you want to be on speaker view. That way you will be able to see the speaker full view that is speaking. And also you'll be able to see Doug's presentation, which is behind him on the TV. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, we do a little different style here with the TV in the background rather than doing a screen share. I don't know about you, but hopefully it gives it a little bit more of a live feel. It also gets me standing up and not sitting in a chair so long every day, which is good for health as well. So let's go right into it. I want to first position this topic today based on what's been going on in the world. We have clients and many clients who have become friends worldwide. We know every country and every continent is a little bit different, but we've all been dealing with the pandemic now for somewhere around 16 months. What a crazy year. First in hotel sales, we had to go through a flood of cancellations and all that business that hotel sales, event sales people as well, we welcome you. You had worked so long to get your weddings all sold out for every Saturday for the coming 2020 season or book up all those groups, conferences, events. And then we had a flood of cancellations every day. We're sending money back. We're canceling out bookings. And 
having hard conversations about attrition and force majeure clauses. Then all of a sudden we had the quiet era. Now it has been kind of that era, depending on where you're at. We know a lot of hotels here in US and also in Canada where hotel salespeople ended up covering shifts at the front desk. Um, I called one of our clients in Boston. It was a 400 room hotel. They have 200,000 square feet of meeting space in a conference center adjacent to them. And I had sent an email to her checking in and she replied on a Saturday night that she was covering the desk. <laughs> She's the VP of sales. So I know it's been a tough time, but what's happening very soon. Now, again, I, my heart goes out to you at different places in the country, even our very large country of US, different states within the US are having different experiences. But uh, thankfully, you know, vaccines are coming soon to all of us, hopefully very soon. Um, and we will get our, on the other side of this. And we certainly have found, I know, uh, again, everybody has different situations. Some hotels and resorts have actually been quite busy during this time. If you're in a rural location with a drive to market set up for social distancing, some of you are really hurting and there's been no business in urban centers. Well, what's going to happen very soon, in my opinion, is a flood of pent up demand. Now, I just love to read the pundits are all saying, oh, well, business travel is going to come back, you know, not until 2024 and leisure guests and this and that. Nobody really knows. But I'll tell you anecdotally, we talk to a lot of people around the world every week here at KTN and all of a sudden it's getting really busy. I noticed the other night, Kathy and I are going to Honduras in three weeks. We had a problem with our ticket. I had to call directly. I thought it was ticketed. American Airlines sends me a note. Your ticket will be canceled if you don't pay for it. I'm like, what? I already paid for this. I went on the phone. It was a one hour and 20 minute hold. At the same time, my daughter was expecting a visitor and she had a question for me. She said her friend had been on hold for Delta Airlines for 51 minutes. It's a good sign for lodging when the airlines are really busy. Okay. So hopefully you're going to see, you know, like a tsunami. And I hate to mention that word for those of you living, particularly in the Pacific Rim nations. But when a tsunami comes first, it sucks all the water out to sea and it is barren. And then it comes slamming back on the shore. My prediction, that's what we're going to see. So what are we going to do about it? Now, right now, we have to prepare. We have a little bit of time. Now, again, hopefully, if you have been covering the front desk of a hotel, or if you're in an event center, maybe you're doing some of the operational jobs there. You have not been in your sales role much, but hopefully you're edging back to full time in the sales chair. What do we do now to prepare for the future sales habitat okay now let's talk let's talk about the sales habitat that we're looking at right now but in order to do that i want to take us back into recent history okay the history of hotel sales now i could take you back to when i started um i should mention by the way kathy cook is my wife so in case i call her honey or dear or in case she gives me that you know scowl that sometimes wife give husbands um, you'll know it's nothing personal, but Kathy goes back, um, you know, a long time in the hotel industry. And I actually go back just a couple of years older than Kathy and to the eighties. Okay. And I actually started out with Marriott corporation as well as Kathy did in the mid eighties. I started in the early eighties, but after that, I actually worked in hotel sales. Um, before I started Kennedy training network, I started my first training company 32 years ago. So when I worked in hotel sales, it was all about phone calls. And right about the time I started my company, things were just migrating to fax. Now, some of you on the webcast today are actually remember fax machines. You know, it's funny. A lot of people still have a fax number. Check and see the last time you actually got a fax. It's probably been a while, but I'm not going to spare. I'm going to spare you from taking you back to the eighties and even the nineties and even for today to the early two thousands. We're just going to go back to the 2010s when sales was a people business. Okay, so here 11 years later, I think is where we've seen the most transition. So originally in the 80s and 90s, it was all about phone calls. And then it became about, you know, fax inquiries. And then email started becoming prominent around the year 2000. Before that, anybody got your first email address? The most important thing we did with email was get a joke email and then forward it to all your friends to give them a good laugh. I call this chain email. But all of a sudden, everything turned to digital. By the time 2010, where I bring you back to now, then 
we entered the period of what I call silent selling. Now, how did I come up with this term? I was sitting in the office of St. Joe, uh, St. Joe Company in the Pan Florida Panhandle. They have the watercolor in the Pearl and they have a uh, St. Joe Country Club. They had four people selling destination weddings. They had very little. They had some group business, too. They had, I think, one or two people selling corporate and association but they were a wedding destination and i was doing what i call a sales process assessment where i sit with each salesperson look at how they manage the flow of leads and so i was waiting i had a schedule to go to meet every salesperson i was waiting to go from one office to the next and i'm sitting there thinking it is really quiet in this office there's six or seven salespeople, and no one is talking that wasn't their fault but it just hit me that when I worked in sales at the Doral Golf Resort in Miami, my last job in 1988, that it was a loud place because everybody was talking, people were coming and going. What happened was everything shifted to digital. First of all, email inquiries, and then increasingly inquiries through third parties, Cvent, and in the social side, The Knot, Wedding Wire. Now, I'm sure in different continents, Okay, Brazil, shout out to you. You probably have your own version of the wire or a wedding wire or the knot, or maybe they have their own uh, Portuguese language for you. But where are we going in the future? So right now we have an interesting time because once again, people are actually calling, are you open? What's going on? What are the health protocols? But I believe as we look to the near term future, when the flood happens again, it's going to be real easy to get back into old habits and return to the era of silent selling. And if that's what we do, your future career in hotel and event sales may not be as promising because what's happening is we have a lot of changes. So to have the right mindset, I want to bring us to this concept here, which is having the right habitudes. Now, I actually thought I had come up with the word habitude <laughs> one day. I was like, this is great. I've invented a new word, habits and attitudes. But then sure enough, I went to I went online and looked and it's actually a really a word already. Habits and attitudes. Marion Webster calls it habitual disposition or mode of behavior or procedure. So if we have the right habitudes, we will have long lasting careers. So let me bring us up uh, to date a little bit. So the attitude of a, of a sales hunter and the habits of using tech for touch. Let me explain a little bit on both of those. So as sales has become increasingly automated over the years and increasingly a digital process where leads come in through Cvent, the knot or wedding wire. And we have applications that are trying to bring those leads right into our CRMs, Customer Relationship Management. Hey, by the way, I know a great one, Event Temple, shout out to you. Thank you for sponsoring us. In fact, Event Temple, from what I see, addresses the sales part <laughs> of a customer relationship management for the sales team, whereas a lot of them are more just on the inventory control. But anyways, use that have the right attitude of a sales hunter but use tech for touch so i have described this if you watch my little graphic here we are transitioning right now i'm talking about right now april 2021 to get us through until this flood of demand comes back we have got to make the transition from sales fishing to sales hunting all right so sales fishing if you see from my graphic a salesperson here has a fishing pole and there's a line and there's a hook on the end. And at the end of that hook hangs the website, the digital presence, your website, your paid promotional listing on wedding wire or the knot or C vent, your posting or listing in your CVB convention and visitors bureau destination management company. I'm trying to use terminology for five different continents here and that a little fishy, the prospect would come along, bite that hook, and we would reel them in, get them close to the boat, scoop them up in the net. Well, not many fish are biting right now. So we have to strap on our orange hunting vest, grab our hunting rifle, and head out to the forest, okay? Now I have a benefit here. My wife, Kathy, actually is a hunter. 
Uh, she grew up on a small farm in Pennsylvania, seventh generation farmer. And Kathy, you actually hunt. That's right. Every year since I was 11 years old. <laughs> we should add, they eat the meat. It goes, fills up her parents' freezer that they live on for the rest of the year. No trophy killing for Kathy. But sales hunting is the mindset that is going to get us through this gap till the flood returns. Now, I'm gonna share with you the tech for touch habits to use when we respond to inbound RFPs, which there are a few starting to come back, but also a big theme for today is to prospect to hunt down new business, strap on the orange vest, go out and find it, okay? So that is our theme for today. Now let's open the curtains and get into content. We're gonna look at three different segments in our time together. We're going to look at content this is from a program that kathy and i do it is a private webcam training and coaching that we do one-on-one -on -one for each salesperson and we take you through in detail so if any of you need extra help or you're interested in that or if you're a leader of a company please reach out to us and we will uh, send you details it's very affordable and um, but we're going to give you all pretty much all the content today free to you thanks to event temple's generous sponsorship you're going to get the content and probably a lot of you can figure this out on your very own. So online scheduling tools we're going to look at. And by the way, all the apps I'm going to recommend for you today are have free versions. So there's no cost for this tech. Online scheduling, screen share meetings such as Zoom, which we're using today for the Event Temple event, and then sending personal video emails that you record one on one for a specific prospect all right now let's uh move on then to our first uh tool here today and i did want to mention that let me just mention one more thing not only will these tools help you right now and to get us across the gap to when the inbound demand returns but if you make them habits okay and you adopt the hunter attitude you will have a long-standing career because when the flood of demand comes back there is the road to technology will continue and there will be increasing automation. I know we have group 360 signed up for us today. Welcome. I've been following what you do, making it easier for the planner to actually book the simple stuff, a couple of a dozen rooms and a meeting space so that salespeople, and I read it in your press releases, I do read them, that salespeople can then be free to do other important tasks, such as hunting down new business and booking the more complicated stuff. If you want to have a long career, okay, um, Kathy did correct me here. She didn't start until 1990. I don't want to make her older than she is, but um, some um, even at Kathy and I, you are some of you are much younger, and you'll be working many more years. You're early in your career. You will see technology changes that I never even thought of yet. But if you maintain the habitudes, the attitude of a sales hunter, and the habits habits of using technology, not to push customers away but to connect and touch them in a more impactful way, put those habitudes together, you will have a very long career. So let's get into our three points right now, first of which is Calendly. Now, um, there are other ones. If, you're, if your corporation uses HubSpot, they integrate with Book With Me. I think if you do a quick Google search of online scheduling apps, you will find many. We happen to love Calendly. Um, now, Kathy and I use the paid version, and I'll explain that in more, but there's a free version. Why is Calendly important? I believe human connections still matter, perhaps even more so now. Now, that, that's for a couple of reasons. For one, so much of the questions we used to have people calling about when they book a group, a wedding, or an event, they can get self-service information online. They can find out our location. They can look at us on Google Max, Maps or from Google Earth and get a look at our actual uh, lay of the land around us. They know the hours of operation. They know what, what kind of food we have in our restaurants if you have one. But we get a lot fewer calls. Each one is that much more important. Now let's also contextualize this into coming out of a pandemic era. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to hug a stranger. I'm the guy, you know, I used to do six trips per month, six, six hotel trainings per month, uh, usually about three round trips 
to, to do that. I would be the one complaining loudly if I somehow got stuck in that middle seat. Now I will happily take the middle seat, sit between two perfectly strangers if we could take off our masks and meet some new people, all right? Uh, we've been playing it very safe here in our family. Not everyone in Florida has been doing this, not everyone in the U.S. I hope your family has been safe. But Kathy and I had not seen a lot of strangers, and I think we all yearn for random contact with others. So if you use tech to touch people and build relationships, it's an opportunity now that is unique to the post-pandemic era. Now, prospecting. I know a big subject right now is prospecting. We have a couple of challenges. Number one, we have people that have worked for 10 years. And now, again, this is a worldwide presentation. But in U.S. and also in Canada, we have had 10 straight years of an up market. And I think a lot of the world. And as a result, a lot of salespeople today could live off phishing. There was enough business coming in every day. Open up your email inbox. There were leads coming in from Cvent, Wedding Wire, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, or what I call brand.com. Okay. Um, but now <laughs> that in email inbox is pretty empty. So we have to prospect. So that's one challenge. The other challenge is, you know, people don't have the skills. Sometimes the leaders don't have the skills. Maybe somebody who started as a sales manager 10 years ago got promoted to director of sales two years ago. They have not prospect. Those that have prospect that have maybe my years of experience or more, they don't understand prospecting today. I have a lot of clients and contacts that, and I read in social media groups I belong to that one is hospitality family on Facebook. If you're not in that, you should be. Get a finger on the pulse of what's happening. Over 60,000 members worldwide, hospitality, family, Facebook. And you he, see people posting like, help, I've got a sign to do cold calling. My general manager wants us to make 50 calls, cold calls every week. So the old school GM, she is saying, get on the phones, call people. It's not quantity, it is quality, okay? Or some of them say, okay, it doesn't have to be a phone call. He says, 50 cold calls, it can be email or phone call. What happens? People send generic stuff out that nobody even reads. So there's two things we have to do, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be persistent, but not pushy. You're not going to send an email. You're not going to make a phone call. You're not going to knock, stop by an office and try to knock on the door. Probably they won't be there. And if they are, they may not let you in. If they do let you in, they're probably wearing a mask. They're going to take your little giveaway water bottle with your logo on it. They're going to close the door. It's going to be meaningless if you only do it one time. So we have to be persistent, but we also have to stand out. Now I have to reference, I have a friend that is in the meeting planning side of this. I'm sure our larger hotels and our larger event space will recognize the name Helms Briscoe. Okay. Helms Briscoe actually is a third party meeting broker service. So major corporations around the world, they're in the international firm, corporations and associations around the world get with Helms Briscoe to broker meetings and events at your hotels and meet events location. And my friend is a regional VP there. And so we've been in touch a lot lately collaborating. In fact, we did this class well, webcam webcast for Helms Briscoe. We're, we're proud to mention that it's for them to go and find new corporations to plan meetings for. But my friend Deanne tells me that all the time, all day long, she gets generic spammy prospecting reach outs. For the most part, it's an email. She forwards some of them to me and it says, hi, Deanne, I am the new sales manager for this hotel or this region of hotels. We uh, would love to host any meetings. Let us know if we can help. And they pretty much all, they say that. She hits delete, delete, delete. However, Deanne, if she, it's at all personalized, even if it's someone from a hotel in the Eastern US region and she's in the Western US region, if it's personalized, Deanne will respond. If it's somewhat relevant, Deanne will respond and say, I think, let me take this out of Deanne. I don't want to speak for her. But 
if it's personalized and relevant, that person is going to receive that email and say, you know, actually, I'm over the west side of this geographical territory. Your hotel is in the east side. Let me forward you to my colleague. Okay. If it's personalized and if you are persistent, okay, an email alone is not going to do it. So, personal relationships cannot be forged through digital means alone through an email or through a follow-up email or even through a drip campaign. Calendly, however, will make it easier for you to have an actual real conversation. Now, one of the reasons why, you know, we salespeople all the time, when I do my classes pre-pandemic, I would say, when a lead comes in, what do you do? Oh, well, we respond. Well, do you call them? Well, if they call us, we follow up with the phone call, Doug. But if they email us, oh, we don't call. Why? Oh, because if they would have wanted to talk, they would have called. Okay. Not true. And, and, and some of them say, you know, once I called this person that inquired and they were kind of rude, right? That may happen. But if you sound professional when you call and you say, good afternoon, this is Doug from the Brand X event venue. We received your inquiry and I just had a couple of quick questions to help me respond with a more personalized proposal. They're probably going to say, okay. You know, I don't think they're going to be thrilled like, good afternoon, Doug Kennedy. Oh, hi. Um, is this Doug Kennedy? Yes. Uh, hi. How are you today? fine are you calling to sell me an extended warranty for my automobile <laughs> i don't know if you can relate to that in other parts of the world but every phone call we get right now seems to be that robo call but if the person says hello doug kennedy and you say oh hello this is kathy i'm with uh, brand x event venue and i just wanted to place a quick call to follow up on your inquiry just a couple of quick questions to help me respond with a more specific proposal yes okay they will talk to you, all right? Now, good luck to get them to answer because they will think you're the telemarketer or the spam call. So you leave a voicemail, then you send an email, and you include in that email a link to your Calendly, and they actually may talk to you. Because most people don't want to engage in trying to set a call because it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You know, well, okay, I'll talk to you, Kathy. How about Thursday? Oh, Thursday's not good. What about Friday? Okay, Friday at two. Well, two's not good. What about what about sixteen hundred? Okay, so Calendly puts all that to rest. So fastest growing app in at least in uh, that I'm aware of. It integrates with Office three sixty five and Google G Suite. We also know more recently as Workspace. It integrates with your online meeting app Zoom, which is free. Microsoft Teams, if you're a major corporation, and there's a free version that works just fine. Now, the free version, here's a little heads up. If you sign up for the free version, about a week later, you will get an email saying, your free version trial has expired. Click now to upgrade to a paid version. Just ignore it. You can have the free version forever. It will have a few limitations. You may want to upgrade to the paid version because then you can have multiple meeting types. You could have one that's just a phone call and you can have one that's a wedding planning call that may be specific to a bride uh, that may be 60 minutes, a menu planning call, okay? But start out with free. It'll sync up with your calendar and then when you sign in to, you can just uh, start a Calendly account and then sign in with your Microsoft Exchange email if like most of the world you use that um, or your Google if like most of the world who doesn't have Microsoft uses Google or if you use something else you can download the plugin all right and then once you do that um, you're going to click the uh, click the gear which is also known as a little round thing with bumps <laughs> select your settings and you can put in your event type and just name it call or zoom meeting with Doug, 30 minutes, all right? Now I'm gonna have Kathy talk about a few of the um, options for editing your Calendly setup tool. Kathy? Yeah, I love Calendly. I, I use it, I've been using it for a little over two years. And what I really like about it is the flexibility to have your Outlook calendar or your Gmail calendar 
syncing with your appointment calendar and Calendly. So most importantly, what you want to make sure you're doing is that you go into Calendly and tell Calendly when it can book you. So when your clients can book you. So if you work nine to five, you might wanna schedule the Calendly events to go from 10 to four. That gives you some buffer time. And then you wanna make sure that your Outlook calendar or your Gmail calendar, whichever you, you are managing the, the uh, integration with Calendly is up to date. So if you have a, a, a site visit or a doctor's appointment, or you take care of something for your kids, or you're starting a little bit later that day, make sure that your calendar is actually blocked. So no one, no one can book you through Calendly from when you told them you were available. And then you also wanna make sure that you have notifications set up. So, and you can do that. I recommend to have reminders set out from Calendly. So once they book you in Calendly, Calendly will automatically send a reminder based on whenever you tell it to. I would recommend 24 hours prior to the event and one hour prior to the event. Now I have mine set up a little bit differently because my events are training appointments and they go out 30 days out. So you probably won't tell Calendly the, to book you more than two weeks out. Okay. And then make sure that you put in the, you can put in when you set up a, an event, you can, you can put a, a question for Calendly to ask your participant or your client. And that way they're prepared and they're ready for whatever it is that you're gonna be meeting with them on. Ask them, do you, do you need to have the agreement? Do you, do you wanna need information about the property? Tell us, tell me, email me and let me know what information that you need from me so that you're prepared for the event. Exactly. Okay, Kathy, and I'm gonna have you come back on just a moment and talk about some of your other best habits as we call them. Some people call them best practices. In the spirit of habitudes, we call them best habits. Let's move on. Um, now, you have a Calendly link, you set it up, you click the gear, you put in your settings, Kathy just spoke of, now you're going to try to get people to use it. Some of our participants say, oh, by the way, in our, in our coaching webcam training and coaching, we meet with you, then we come back on to train you how to use it. Then we meet with you to role play using all this. Then we meet with you three or four weeks later to see how it went. Some people say, well, Doug, everything is going great, but sometimes I'm not getting a lot of booking with Calendly. Well, what did you do? Well, if all they do is stick it in their auto signature, people will not notice it. So you must talk about it in the call. Tell them, okay, Kathy, and when I follow up, I'll include my Calendly link, which will allow you to grab a time on my agenda. Then explain what that is in every email message that you send out and also in the other times with you engage with them. So you gotta kind of train people to use it. Okay, let's wrap up on Calendly. We're going to go to speak to best habits for online meeting applications. So we're gonna talk generically and call them all online meeting platforms. Now, there's a lot of different ones out there. Um, I First one I ever used was in the year 2000, I did the hotel industry's first ever webcast sponsored by the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association in the year 2000, and we used WebEx. It was me in my office, quite nervous actually, even with 11 years of presentation skills. I was talking on a phone to a dial-in number and I was sharing a screen and narrating a PowerPoint deck. You wonder what happened to WebEx. I guess they still work with major mega corporations, but GoToMeeting is what Kathy and I have been using for uh, more recently. And of course our kids grew up on Skype when they talked to all their friends on Skype. And then of course, a lot of corporations use Microsoft Teams or Hangouts. Well, we like Zoom, we switched to Zoom because Zoom has been by far, at least in North America, the one that is embraced the most. It's also free up to 40 minutes. So it supposedly will cut you off after 40 minutes. Although I've heard that sometimes they let you let you write a little bit longer for if you need to go with a free version, you will get by with the 40 minutes. OK, so few best habits for webcam. Always use your webcam. This allows you to connect on a human level and allows for nonverbal communication. When I spoke with my friends at Helms Briscoe, they have very often the national hotel brand sales manager will go on, they have Wednesday presentation days. 
at Helms Briscoe and all the Helms Briscoe associates are invited to attend and they'll have a person from Brand X Hotel Brand, okay? And that person comes on and presents and you have literally, I don't know, a hundred or more Helms Briscoe associates, you have their captive attention. I asked my friend, a VP there, do they ever turn on their webcam? She said, you know, not very often, Doug. They're usually just showing slides. Be brave. Put on your webcam. It allows you to be human. Now, interestingly, one would think that, oh, this is like an age thing. You know, older people like my age, you know, they don't like being on webcam. When I teach this class on site in a traditional setting and I have people actually use these tools, Actually, I find out it's the young people in their 20s and 30s. They're like, oh, I don't like to be on webcam. I'm like, wait a minute. You're 30. Okay. When you were born, it was the era of camcorders. Did your mom or dad not have a camera on every move that you made? Yeah, they did actually. And are they not sitting in boxes in your dad's closet, right? That no one ever watches. That's our house. But you got to get used to it. You got to put aside that. Yes, if you're working remote, yes, you have to get dressed. I know a lot of people have been working from home and a lot of men are growing beards. And, you know, I, I heard in US that blouses for ladies are selling a lot more than skirts and slacks. <laughs> but we have to make the effort to be on webcam because now we have gestures, now we have our smile. Some of you might be thinking, but Doug, I don't like how I look. Look, I don't like how I look either. I wish I had less wrinkles. I wish I had more hair but I am who I am. Love the person in the mirror. Kathy just did a, a podcast. I have to give a shout out. It was for a women's uh, podcast group. And that was one of the topics that really hit with the presenter was like, find something to like about yourself. But I'll let Kathy speak to that. But, you know, get on webcam, get in the game. Also ask them to be on webcam say, oh, did you want to turn on your webcam? When they book you on Calendly, if you integrate it with Zoom, they will get a link to Zoom. So when you send them an email, hey, Kathy, thanks for signing up on my calendar for Thursday. I'll look forward to seeing you on Calen on Zoom and I will have my webcam on. It will be great to see you too if you're up for it. And now she will know that she wants to look presentable, okay? That's gonna allow for personal engagement and you can have their full attention. I don't know how many of you have ever been doing a sales presentation and you hear in the background, while you're doing your pitch and showing your hotel or event location slides, you hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but they're clearly checking their email. You try to get them on webcam. Kathy is going to speak to some best habits for webcams themselves. First Kathy? of all, I don't know how many of you actually presented on webinars. It's, it's not that easy to do if you've never done it before, but you get used to it. I am such a enthusiastic, extroverted person when it comes to presenting in person. And I had to learn the challenges of presenting online. So you can do it. For those of you who haven't done it, you can do it. Couple tips that I wanna give you is that you always wanna make sure you're looking into the camera because looking into the camera means that you're looking into their faces. You don't wanna be looking down at the film strip and then also we want to have, consider getting an external camera. I have an external camera because my laptop camera kind of made me look a little less appealing. Like it was a kind of jaundice, a jaundice. I had yellow skin and it just wasn't looking. And I'm, you know, I want to look my best. You want to look your best and consider getting a ring light. A ring light is something that you can put behind your camera like right now, I have my ring light on. I'm going to turn it off so you can see the difference. Now it's off. Hopefully you can see that there is a difference. Now it's, now I have it on and now it's off. So there is a big difference with the lighting. And if you're working from home, sometimes the lighting is a little challenging. So you want to make sure that you test out that lighting prior to actually conducting a, a webinar. You don't wanna be having the webinar and then you look all dark and you can't see you. And there's, there's several different platforms. There's Teams that you can use. And he said, a go-to meeting, WebEx. Now Teams 
has a really wonderful function called blurred backgrounds. And you can blur your background and Zoom, you can put in virtual backgrounds and the virtual backgrounds help with your lighting as well. So consider those things when you're thinking about your presentation and, and how you look on the camera. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, and uh, Zoom virtual background are very easy to use. Teams is blurred. Lighting is tricky. It's interesting because here, I, I picked this shirt today. I, I thought it would be a good color to wear. I'm one of my favorite colors. And then I noticed with this shirt on, it changes my coloring here because normally I wear a little bit lighter dress shirt and it actually makes me look more tan than I am. So, you know, little things like that. Um, and I, unfortunately, I didn't realize that in, in time to go home and get another shirt for the webcast. So, you know, pay attention to that. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not that big a deal, but if you're gonna presenting to a large group, to a corporation or to Helms Briscoe, make sure to look your part. Now, outline your presentation. As Kathy said, it's easy to participate in a Zoom meeting or we're gonna just call them Zoom meetings, but leading them takes some skill and really not so much skill as habits, habits that are formed through practice. So what are you going to share and in what order are you going to share that information? We're going to give you a few tips here. Um, if you want to take a screenshot of this, I, I forgot to mention doing that, or pull out your camera and take a picture of the screen. Start off by sharing their website. You know, if you're, if you're pitching a, a company for a meeting or a company party or a holiday party, the first slide might be their logo. Visit their website, find out something interesting about them. Do they have a charity they support that you might comment on? Your professional images, this would be the photo stock photo gallery that you have of your event space, your guest rooms, your outdoor spaces, your F&B presentations. Also candid photos. Candid photos work really well where the gallery photo shows a traditional reception, but you're selling something for this summer that's gonna be a socially distanced wedding. Show, if you've had some, take organic photos. Of course, you wanna either blur out the people or when they're not facing you, so you don't have to worry about getting um, sign-offs for the model's uh, authorizations. And then, of course, after you go through all that, go back to the contract or proposal document, switch screens, show that full screen to go through it and go over the terms and the structure of uh, the payments. So the best way to do all that we found is to drop the images into a PowerPoint deck. And I'm pretty sure most of you know how to copy and paste an image into a PowerPoint deck. If not, grab your teenager <laughs> or grab your middle schooler, perhaps grab your fifth grader um, and they will help you. And I say that jokingly, but you know, um, our kids, at least when Kathy had her iPhone, the, the reason she doesn't have an iPhone is the kids went off to college and I have a, a Samsung Galaxy, an Android, and we didn't have anyone to be tech support. But anyways, copy the images in. Some of the finer points I'll mention real quick, make sure to compress the photos. If you use the photo gallery, chances are it's very high resolution. That may, if you drop a bunch of 20 megabyte pictures in here, the document may crash. It may be slow to load, and at the end, when you send it as a PDF, um, then it may it won't go through because it'll be too large of a file. So get your deck ready, grab your images, start off with their logo. Then in a hotel version here, the hotel, the lobby, the inside of the lobby, the meeting space, the public area space, the event space, and then the guest rooms. All right, and then before you share, when you start your meeting. Before you start your, your Zoom meeting, we're talking about close all the windows except the ones you're going to share. You do not want to be that person that says, OK, Kathy, hello, how are you? OK, let me share my presentation. And you're going. And you're trying to find the right little screen to share or you share the wrong screen. OK, and they saw that you are actually shopping on Amazon while you were waiting. Um, so close the windows other than the ones you're going to prepare. Now, also, this is a big one for Kathy. Um, Kathy, I didn't ask you yet, but I'm going to just have you jump in. Start by sharing your webcam. Why is that important, Kathy? Well, you want to have the full face. You want to have that personal contact with your client before you start actually sharing your content. 
have that conversation with them, ask them how they're doing and look at the camera straight into the camera because you know that really gets them when you're looking in the eye. Okay. I like Kathy to cover those presentation tips. I'm probably the only keynote speaker with 32 years of experience that's, that has a wife that's better credentialed than him. Kathy is a, a distinguished Toastmaster DTM, a worldwide public speaking non for profit. Um, once you've done with the talking to them, then share your screen and you will become the little box in the corner. Let's start off full screen. Keep it engaging. Uh, I have been told by people that love me very much that sometimes I talk too much. Thank you, Kathy. Pause and solicit feedback. <laughs> So what do you think so far? Any questions about our COVID pandemic cleaning? Um, what do you think that's gonna work for your group? Okay, um, keep it as engaging as you go. And then finally, we do wanna give you one sales tip. Well, I guess two, because keep it engaging through asking questions, but use storytelling selling. So if you are interested, you, uh, if you're interested, we would love to sign you up for our webcam training and coaching. You can also go to our website and we have a, a tab of articles that Kathy and I have written on all kinds of different subjects. You'll find the articles tab, go down to sales, you will find articles on storytelling selling. That involves visual, emotional, alluring descriptions. That involves just for you selling to make it sound like you can enjoy instead of we have, we have, we have, and also recommending, suggesting, and endorsing. But let's move on in the interest of time to our third and final topic. And then as long as you're up for it, Sammy, we will take questions if there are any. We are gonna to speak to the third and final tool, engaging your prospects and clients through video email. Now, this is particularly good for prospecting. Um, I think to go back to prospecting, you know, you're gonna go, you're gonna make a phone call. Hopefully you're gonna get through. If not, you're gonna email, okay? Hopefully they're gonna respond. If not, what do you do? Do you keep on calling, calling, calling? That's obnoxious. We want to be persistent, but not pushy. Another tool in your toolbox is video email. Okay, or if you do go knock on doors, we have people that are venturing back out, calling on the local companies. Hi, if you have any holiday events, we'd love to host them. Or if you have any, uh, so here's one, it sounds morbid. Some of our clients are calling on funeral homes. Okay, now, that's for lodging, for lodging rooms, and I don't know about so much for event space, but, you know, if you're going to go out there and prospect, that's not a bad place. When, you know, nobody wants to think about the funeral home, but when somebody calls the funeral directors, they're real busy. And a lot of times they'll say, do you know any good hotels in the area? Okay. Um, on a happier note, you know, you could be calling on the local hospitals, um, but don't just drop off a business card. Ask for a contact information, send a follow up video email. If you actually get to talk to someone, you're probably wearing a mask when you're prospecting, if you're doing the right thing to make them feel safe. When you get back to your office, we had one of our clients, um, Nicole from the uh, McNeil Hotel companies was one of our pilots in this program. By the way, McNeil Hotels trained all of their hotels, something like 20, 20 hotels. Um, and they've all been through this. They're seeing phenomenal results. But Nicole was the first one that did this. She sent a video email after a cold call. She came back to her office, took off the mask and said, I wanted to show you there's actually a face behind this mask. So that's how we use this for prospecting. Um, this is what video email looks like to you receive it. Okay. This is Tracy Walkup, the director of sales from the Homewood Suites in Carmel, Indiana, along with her general manager and which they record a video email in their lobby. That's why they're wearing masks. It says, hi, and it says the person's name. It drops it into the email. The person sees their name. They see the length of time and they see a play button and they probably will play it. Um, Kathy's gonna talk about the sign in just a minute, um, but because that's very important what Kathy's holding up the sign. But when you see, if you if people get a generic, video the play rates are very low i know that because i've used it for selling sales training to hotels and event companies to get people to play a video you have to show them that it's personalized you do that by showing their name okay here's another example this is from the area director of sales for mcneil hotels happens to be another hilton affiliate property this is actually what it looks like in an outlook email 
to the recipient, the play button, the time frame, and in this case, they actually have the company name in the background and the name of the person she's speaking to. So this person knows it is just for them. And if you keep it under a minute, the likelihood that they will play it is much higher. All right. Um, Vidyard. Now, we actually use BombBomb Video Email here is our preferred vendor. If you do, um, if you really get in this and you want to start using it for other marketing purposes, please reach out to us after this webcast. We will send you our link. You will go into it. You can get a trial subscription and you will go into our user group. Once we get enough users in the user group, we're going to start doing um, like a like a user group social media to share best habits. Um, but the nice thing about Vidyard, it is free. BombBombs has a two week free trial and then it's moves to paid only. 29 US dollars a month. Vidyard has a free version. At least they're saying right now free forever. So you log into Vidyard. From a desktop, this is you sign up for your account, you click the record button, and this is what you will see. You will see your smiling face, okay, and you will see different options here. You can record just the camera, that would be just you talking. We call this the video selfie. You can record just the screen, that would be just whatever's on your computer screen, or you can record the screen and the camera. We call that a narrated screen recording, okay, so we're gonna speak to the video selfie and the narrated screen recording. Log into Vidyard, click the record button, press start recording, and you record your video. When you are done, you will press stop recording, and then you will press share. Okay, when you press share, your video is ready to go. You can either email it directly from Gmail, if you're a Google Workplaces business, or you can copy the link into a thumbnail. And that will actually show the thumbnail picture, what you saw in the previous slide, drop that into your Outlook email or whatever email platform you may be using. Okay. Um, now, if you, uh, Kathy, if you want to then address uh, seeing their name, the first few seconds and keeping the message short. Sure. My recommendation is for your videos to be less than a minute. And if you use BombBomb, Bomb, it actually will tell you how many seconds or how or what the length of your video is on that email as soon as they get the email and you want to make it personalized as Doug said maybe get a whiteboard invest in something it's it's not that expensive be five dollars on Amazon or maybe go to the dollar store and get a whiteboard and put their name on it and just wave it for a few seconds as the video is starting and then you can put it down if you don't want to invest in a whiteboard just get a piece of paper and put their name on it Welcome. And we want to also be giving that love to the camera because when the countdown, there's there's going to be a countdown, there's three, two, one, and then you're on. So you be smiling and having your eyes open because you don't want to be looking down, have your eyes closed, because that's what's going to show on the actual thumbnail or the presentation in your email. You want to be giving that love to the camera and smiling nice and big. And then when the countdown finishes, that's when you can start speaking. Now the narrated screen shares that we're gonna talk about, those videos can be two minutes or less, but try to do just maybe four to six slides with the, with the narrated screen share that you're, what you're showing. And that's about it. Back to you, Doug. Thank you. Yes, so to recap that, the video selfie where it's just you talking should be under a minute. Now we'll talk about the narrated screen share as we move into prospecting. That can be maybe two minutes, but not much longer than that. Now, um, okay, so video email specific to prospecting, all right? So now you've placed a phone call, they didn't reply. You sent an email, they didn't reply. So you're not gonna give up. Maybe you send a video selfie, they still didn't reply. But you wanna send a narrated screen recording. Or another example might be that you're following up on inbound RFPs, so, so, sorry, wrong way. So someone inquired, you responded in Cvent or the wedding wire, and you started to communicate, you got an email address from this person, you started to pursue it, and then you didn't hear back. They never clicked Calendly, you never got to do a Zoom meeting, do a narrated screen recording. 
You can also use it right now for reach outs to existing clients. When COVID first hit, as many of you know, it hit Italy very badly right after China. We had many clients in Italy. We did a shout out video for all of our clients in Italy, sent it to an association that we work there, that work with there, that Kathy and I spoke at their conference. And we did a reach out, you know, um, check-ins with clients. Hey, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Is your business coming back? So this is the narrated screen share. This is one of our clients, the Mission Point Resort, Mackinac Island, Michigan. It's, it's a, you take a, uh, a ferry or what you call in Europe, a hydrofoil to go to this island. You see, it's quite beautiful. This is how it would look. Uh, this is actually their website that I recorded this sample from, but you see you as the presenter will be in a small bubble call out button and they will see whatever you're showing on your screen. Uh, to do that, you go back and log into Vidyard, you click the screen and camera option, and then you will record it. Here to finish up are some examples from some more of our clients. Um, this is the Courtyard Marriott, okay? And you can see here, this is pitching a client here. Their logo is here. The presenter and the sales director, Amy, is here, and she's speaking to them. Here's another one that Amy did. Amy did some fantastic work that we've seen so far. And you see this is her outside of her hotel, which is in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, here's one from our, our friend Lucas, who is the dual director of sales for a Marriott. I think it's a Spring Hill and a Hampton Inn. Oh, it is a Spring Hill. She did a pitch to one of his clients. You see Lucas's handsome, smiling face. Uh, speaking to his prospects. So that is the narrated screen share. So in summary, um, I hope that we have inspired you to think about a new way of evolving your career. Certainly to use these skills for prospecting to get us past this gap in the next who knows how long, but hopefully only a few more months till business starts to trickle back. Okay, so we need to prospect now, but if you have the right habitudes, the right attitudes and the right habits, you will make prospecting a habit for the rest of your career. You will no longer be content to be a sales fisher and you will strap on the orange vest, grab your hunting rifle and go find new business. You will use tech to touch people. Okay. If you use tech to touch your prospects, but also your clients and the inbound RFPs, if you do that, you will have a long career. The business will no doubt become more automated as time adapts, okay? But it doesn't mean sales is going away, okay? Um, people are asking, besides Vidyard, we have also used BombBomb, Bomb, like Explosion, BombBomb, Bomb, weird name, great program. Uh, somebody just mentioned Loom, I don't know that one. Make sure though, the one that you use is going to drop the video straight in to the email. That's the most important thing. As far as our program, we have a special event temple rate, $299. It's, our rate is, is now $599 US uh, for the three-part program that's going to include a live webcam training, a second session to role play, and then a follow-up three weeks later to report back. Well, Sammy, we used all of our time. But I have time, if you have time, if we have any questions from you or anyone in the field. Definitely, we just have one besides the um, alternative to Vidyard. Okay. Um, so it's around integrations. Can I connect my Google Calendar with Calendly and Zoom? Absolutely, yes. Your the Google uh, Calendly definitely integrates with Google. Now I've not done that because we're in the Microsoft world, and uh, it will. And when you sign up, you'll just do calendar integrations, and then also when you do location is where you select zoom and it'll take you to the zoom log up login screen and then at that point you'll be able to put in your zoom username password and every time someone books you on calendly it will grab a zoom time okay yeah i've used that integration before and it's pretty Have easy you, to set up yeah. yeah you use zoom too and i know you you try mm -hmm. to do your well your your personal things but also at event temple you guys are using these tools to schedule your client trainings yeah definitely the entire, it seems like a lot of businesses and industries are adopting these tactics to be able to connect with their clients. Oh, we have one more coming in. Oh, thanks a lot. It was amazing. Thank okay. you, Juan.
Well, we are grateful to Event Temple to sponsor this. It's not something we just do randomly for free on our own. So thank you to Event Temple for sponsoring this generously. We hope to rob value to you and uh, goodwill to Event Temple and to the eight, uh, almost 100 people from five continents and uh, 18 countries around the world. Good evening, good afternoon, good night, good day. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and I will send out the recording tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you, Doug and Kathy. Bye. Bye, Sammy. Bye, everyone.